Welcome to the Hillbilly RV channel. Every now and then, I give a shout out to the ladies out there that fix stuff. I, I love it. Um, ladies have always been a big part of my channel. 10 to 20% of my views are ladies. So good on you ladies for fixing stuff or at least learning how to fix it in case you do need to someday. So enough about that. Um, what are we working on today? We're working on furnace. Um, I've got it out of the uh, RV already. And let's uh, let's take a look and see what it is doing or not doing. And uh, every now and then people want to ask me about my test setup on my truck. I just got 12 volt AC DC. AC DC? <laughs> I got 12 volt. Uh, <laughs> uh, golly. I got 12 volt positive and negative right here. And I always keep a couple of jumper wires. And that's how I power stuff. And my propane's right here. And the uh, tanks in a hidden compartment over there. So let's uh, let's hook this thing up real quick and show you what it's doing. So here is our furnace. Hook the positive up. Make sure that's not touching anything. It shouldn't be touching. And the ground. I've already got the two blue wires together with a Wago. Um, so let's uh, let's just see what it does here. Never tried to ignite. I don't have the propane hooked up, but that doesn't matter because it never tried to ignite. Let me show you. Uh, these boards are kind of self-diagnosing to a point. Let me show you what it's saying. Get y'all off that tripod. See the LED light on that board right there? All right. If we look at this legend up here, it says a blank, one blank with a three second pause is airflow or limit, I think is what it says. Now that looks pretty weak to me. Uh, that LED light, I would think it would be a lot brighter than that. So I actually want to switch through this board real quick and see if we just have a bad board. So. Let me go grab the board and I'll be right back. Of course, I'm going to go grab a dinosaur board, which, if you need one, is in my Amazon store. Go to my website, hillbillyrv.net, and uh, you'll find a link to my Amazon Associates affiliate linky thingy. And if uh, you know, you're going to buy something from Amazon anyway, uh, and it's in my store. Go buy it, and it uh, helps me out a little bit. So, we go grab a board, dinosaur board, and we'll carry on. Just grabbed a fan 50 plus pins. So, we can get the air. Air it finally uh, focused. Let's just pop it in there real quick and see what happens. disconnect the power a little wing nut down in here you spin that wing nut out and that board is on a little plastic thing in here of course the wires are super short so let me get the six pin connector undone igniter wire the sparky grab a pair of pliers oh look at y'all Y'all looking way up there. You ain't even looking to see what I'm doing down here. Where are the people? All right. Pop the dinosaur board on there. You don't have to worry about keeping these two red wires straight. Because one's a small spade connector, the other one's a larger spade connector. So you can't mix them up. 
Well, I guess you could, but you'd have to try. Plug the six pin connector up to the board. Make sure it's not touching anything. And I'll connect the power back. Let's see what happens. Now the LED light works a little bit different on a dinosaur. I'll see if I can show you. Alright. We should have a green LED on this dinosaur board. That lets us know that the, uh, that the safety circuits are fine. That means the cell switch is closed and the high limit switch is closed. We got no green LED, so we got something going on either in the cell switch or the high limit switch. Let's see if we can figure out which it is. I'm gonna get this board out of the way for right now. Oh, let me have a little look-see here. All right, our high limit switch is not over here behind the gas valve. Uh, of course, our cell switch is inside this, on the backside of this plastic cover. Uh, oh, what, what is that guy doing in there? He just keeps showing up. I can't get rid of that guy. Let me lay him over. He can watch from over. So let me get this. Uh, let me get this cover off here real quick. Just got four quarter inch screws in it. Um, they're kind of way down in there, so we'll use an extension on our driver. Let me get them out. Get that cover out of the way, and then I'll be right back. We'll see. Some of them, the high limit switch is down in here, but we need to get the cell switch anyway so let me get in there well I'll tell you what I'll just let y'all watch and while y'all watching me take these four screws out I uh, want to remind you guys and gals to be sure and go check out our friends YouTube channel you you have a friend in the RV business uh, it's uh, Tony and Tanya from VLRV, VLRV down in Inman, South Carolina. Uh, let me go grab a magnet. They run a, a really awesome mobile service down there in Inman. And they have recently started uh, doing YouTube videos. So, uh, yeah, another good source, real good source of reliable information. Because we all know that YouTube is inundated with bad information. So you really got to watch who you watch. But now those guys are doing a great job. And when they tell you something, you can just about pretty much, you know, believe it's the gospel. But you know, they're like every other human on the planet. You know, they're fallible. We all are. Heck, I make mistakes every day. Uh, sometimes you get to see them on video. <laughs> oh, let me see if I can snake this cover up out of here. There's our cell switch. Feels good. Feels good. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Ah, yeah, that cell switch is way down there under this uh, squirrel cage fan. So let me get a meter. We'll do some more testing. Because we're not going to throw parts at it. We're going to figure out what's wrong with it. And we're going to replace the part that's bad and not replace a bunch of other stuff. I have had some comments lately on uh, some videos where I am testing components like this um, and people are saying you really should use a test light well I used to be a big fan of test lights um, but I got tired of the the technical assistance guys if I called to uh, get some assistance um, diagnosing something 
They'd always want to, well, what's your voltages? That's why I don't know, I'm using test light. Well, you can't use test light. Get your meter out. So I got tired of that, so I just get my meter out every time. I'm testing stuff like this. Hopefully y'all can see that. Um, let me make sure that our red wire ain't touching nothing. Uh, hey, look, he's going to want to come in handy. He's going to hold that red wire up for me so it don't touch my truck. Good job, little dude. All right, let me... Uh, there's two terminals on this cell switch. So what I'm going to do is put the power back on the furnace, close the cell switch, and check our powers. And hopefully you'll be able to see it right there. Make sure there's no wires down there in the fan. Okay. Oh. <laughs> ah, what I say about being fallible? <laughs> you gotta have a board in it to make it run. <laughs> oh my word. Don't. Don't watch this video for uh, information. It's for entertainment only. <laughs> let, me, let me stick. We'll just stick the OE cord back in there. Golly, what an idiot. Let me take the power off real quick. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I was like, why isn't the furnace starting? Why is the fan starting? Anyway, oh mercy, it's Friday, folks. Been another long week here in West Virginia. We've had all kinds of crazy weather. It's been, it's springtime in West Virginia. I mean, we just, it's been everything from shorts, t-shirt weather to, uh, it hasn't snowed this week. Had a lot of rain and uh, a lot of wind and it's been awesome. So we get this thing plugged in without a bunch of wires getting tangled up in our fan. Nothing like that. Let's see here. Starts, if the fan starts, you hear some weird noise. It's just a wire rubbing. Just take a chill pill. All right, let's try this again. All right. Close the cell switch. Yeah, see? All right, let's see what we got going on here. There's one terminal, 11 9. There's the other terminal, 11 9. Okay, let me unplug it. So what's that tell us? Well, it tells us that we got power going into the cell switch and out of the cell switch. So the cell switch is fine. Now, doing our visual inspection, we can tell that uh, the wire coming back from the high limit switch is black, comes into the board. Let me see who is texting me. Oh. Let me tell him thanks buddy trying to help me out with a project um, so just to double check ourselves make sure that the old hillbilly ain't having a brain fart let's I'm gonna go to the board that six pin connector that we kept plugging and unplugging on that board and uh, we can clearly see which one's the black wire let's check voltage going coming from the high limit switch to the board see if we have anything there um let me see if i can get everything from touching all right nada oh Nada. 
Okay. So, does that make sense? Uh, the power, the power leaves the, the board, goes on this one, goes to one side of the cell switch, through the other side of the swell, cell, swell, the cell switch, down to the high limit switch, from the high limit switch, back up to a different terminal on the board. So we know we got it at the cell switch, but we're losing it down there at the high limit switch. So let's tear into this thing. I don't know how far we got to go to actually access that uh, high limit switch, but we're going to move over here to the table and uh, start tearing this thing down. All right. I think I got y'all set up where you can see. Hopefully the camera will stay focused where it's supposed to stay focused. I need to. I need to turn that thing around where I can see it a little bit too. Okay. All right, let's see here. This is one of those that has a, a clip on the, uh, on the squirrel cage fan. So once again, I need to get this board out of the way. Let's see. Do it without unhooking it. Oh yeah. All right, need to reach in there with a pair of pliers and uh, grab a hold of that, pull that squirrel cage fan off and see if we can get to that high limit switch. Y'all might recognize these pliers from the, those are the ones I reached in there and pulled Mickey Mouse out of the squirrel cage fan with a couple videos ago. Everybody liked those pliers. I'll tell you, those things are awesome. Um, dad bought me those for Christmas probably 40 years ago and uh, they come in super handy when you got to reach in somewhere deep and get something it's awesome let me uh, put some light on the subject and reach in there and squeeze that clip Clips like uh, it's like hose clamps, OEM hose clamps on a car. Now that we got that clamp off, should be able to just pull this fan off. Look, see where it's at. It's uh, just about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, there's about a sixteenth of an inch of the motor shaft sticking out, so we'll know where to put it back. See if I can get this thing to move. It's got a little bit of rust on it. Ooh. I'm gonna have to loosen that motor up just a smidge. I'm gonna have to reach down in there with a 5 16 socket and uh, loosen that motor a little bit. That has a, like a, a screw clamp radiator screw clamp steel automotive style stuff see if that's going to be enough I don't want to break that fan uh, let's see if I can loosen it up just a little bit more we might have to pull that motor plumb out I don't know hope not There's your squirrel cage fan. Let me see what I can see. Oh man. Seriously. Oh, I think it's gonna be easier just to get that motor out of the way. Rather than fight that thing. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. If it's only got one screw in it down there. 
Uh, let me uh, let me lay this thing on its side. Maybe. Well, nah, y'all still ain't gonna be able to see. Um, I'm gonna reach down in here, and there's I can see one screw that holds that high limit switch, the whole bracket on. Let me get that screw out, and we'll see if we can get that thing out of there. See if it's gonna work. Now, that motor's got to uh, that motor's got to come out of the way. That's just all there is to it. So what we have to do is access the, the combustion wheel on this end of the motor, get it off. There's a couple of screws, probably three screws, holds that. Hold this plastic cover on. Nope, only two. Get that out of the way. Oh man, I have to pull the gas valve and everything out. Man. Oh well. It is what it is. Man, I hate to disturb all that. Let me get that clamp. It's got this exact same clamp as the uh, blower wheel, room wheel, squirrel case fan. People, manufacturers call it a little bit of everything. Get that off. There it is. See if uh, maybe we can just slip the motor out and leave the combustion wheel in there. That sucker got some rust on it now. Hooey. Man. There's about a half inch of that motor shaft sticking out of that blower wheel. Um, yeah, I gotta knock some of that rust off. Uh, might use sandpaper, might use a little file. I don't know. Let me work on that. All right, don't y'all tell nobody. I just took and drilled a 3 8 hole in this case over here and just take a tappity tappy with a hammer. I'd <laughs> get, that, get that motor out. I think it's about ready to fall out. Maybe just tappity tap a little bit more. Well, it will just fall out of there after I got it out there that far. Hmm. We went a lot easier than that before I turned the camera on. There it went. All it will do is clean, uh, clean this motor shaft up real good with some sandpaper now that we got it out here and it'll slip right back in there like super easy. Now we can get to that. Now we can get to that high limit switch. Let's see here. Hopefully it's just got one screw in it. Oh, it does, yes. Let me get that bracket up out of there. Oh, 
right. Now, now once we pull these wires off, uh, we are going to we're going to test this high limit switch, and chances are it might be okay. That happens quite often. I'll show you what happens. I think. I think this what happens. Whenever you disturb that switch, I think sometimes these little tabs will get a a bad connection or something. And once you fool with that switch, it'll be working. But let's let's test it and find out. Because we're not we're not just throwing parts at this thing. We want to know what is wrong with it so that we will replace the correct part. Put the meter on ohms, get a beep if there's continuity. Put one side on one side at limit switch. Oh, look at there, open. So this high limit switch, what it thinks right now is whatever temperature rating this fan, this switch is probably um, around a couple hundred degrees or something, I think. Uh, it thinks it's that hot and it's not. <laughs> that happens to us sometimes, right? We think we're hot and we're not. <laughs> ah. Oh, I'm so silly. Now, it just so happens that I have the correct high limit switch right here. There's your part number. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. Okay, let's see, it's a kit. So let's see, let's see what comes in a kit. I think it's gonna be the new bracket and all. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you that for sure because I haven't got it open yet. I'll be able to tell you for sure here in a minute. In case you couldn't read that, it's a uh, 31376. This furnace here happens to be an Atwood. It is an 8535 Roman numeral three. Yeah, it's the whole thing. So all we gotta do is plug our wires back up, snake that thing down in there, and put our one screw back in it, start reassembling. Oh, yeah. You don't see what it should do if it's when it's good. Put my meter back on ohms. Turn the little beepy thingy on so it beeps when there's continuity. Turn the beepy thing on. There we are. All right. See, we have continuity. Ta-da! That's our new one. <laughs> That's the good one. All right, now we'll start reassembly. By golly. We got it going our way now. So tell you what, I don't really have anything else to talk about. So I think I'm going to cut the camera off right now, reassemble everything just like I just disassembled it, only opposite, and we get ready to test. I'll bring you back. It's all reassembled. Went back really smooth. Cleaned that motor shaft up with a uh, little piece of sandpaper. <laughs> it was actually too slick. Uh, but we got it all back together and uh, spin the fan. It all sounds good. Let's get her hooked up. We'll go ahead and hook the propane up this time because I have a little confidence that it's probably going to work. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, I realized while I was doing this that I told y'all we were testing the entire circuit by testing that black wire on that six pin connector. No, wrong. Again. Like I say, you got to watch who you watch. Uh, it would have been one of the blue wires. My bad. 
Um, the black was the ground. So, <laughs> anywho, we know the limit switch was bad. Uh, we had already determined that. So let's uh, get the sucker hooked up again and test fire. Now you will notice that this has the flue in it. This is one of those that you have to have that flue pipe in to test fire it. It will not run without that flue pipe in there. So let me get the propane hooked up. Propane is hooked up and it is on. Let's hook up our power and ground. And we'll let the let the little hillbilly doll do another job. He likes to feel he likes to feel needed, just like all of us. So let's try this thing. Well, what do you know? We fixed another one. So, uh, hey, really appreciate you watching. If you watched all the way to the end, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, nobody, sh nobody should have to watch all of my videos, right? So, uh, that's it. If you did watch the end, though, don't forget to leave me a comment, a criticism, a concern. This is Saturday, like 5 o'clock. I am not going to fix another one. Y'all gonna have a fantastic day and have a fantastic week next week. Catch you next time. Bye.